Welcome to the CMO or CGMA Management Case Study. So the latest pricing for November 2024 and February 2025 sitting is called Shiny Glass Company. Now what I would do in our pricing application I've prepared you approximately 199 pages of a pricing application note. Now instead of walking through the pricing, treating it like a story, I'm sure that you can find lots of similar resources over the internet. What I would do is I like to treat this company and the precinct like the real exam. So this is why what I would do is that firstly I would like to go through in depth for each of the core activity required by the SIMAS examiner and that's very very important there because a lot of students may ask a question that do I need to go back to cover all the E2, P2 and F2 study materials? My answer for that is absolutely no because the current examining team of the MCS would set exam questions based on the core activity A, B, C, D, and E okay, uh, from uh, the SIMA MCS syllabus. So this is what I, will, I want you to do is that firstly, I would like to cover as the core activity area A to evaluate opportunities to add value to the shiny glass company. Before dipping into the core activity B is to implement senior management decisions for the shiny glass company and to manage performance, measuring performance and managing internal as well as the external stakeholders related to the shiny glass company. Now of course that we know that the MCS exam will contain six variants. So for example I've taken from the past exam questions from uh, the February 2024 as you can see that the exam variant from variant 1 to 6 with the suggested solution and also the marking guidance there. So for example, if I click on the variance number one, as you can see there, for example, we've got four questions, okay? So three hour exam and four questions. So each question usually will contain two to three sub requirements. So what you need to do is to write enough point to pass these questions. And of course, in our course, I will be taking you through to the key exam technique and the knowledge from the syllabus and to make sure that you analyse the shiny glass company, you're treating the precinct case, not the story, but is the exam related case. Right. Now, if you go through the precinct materials, that we've got lots of things in there. Now, it's just to be a manufacturer about the double glazing uh, product. Uh, and splitting into, for example, manufacturing, sales, installation, and so on, these functions related to uh, the shiny glass company. I've also calculated the financial ratios okay, for the shiny glass company for you already. Let's firstly have a go at the introduction paragraph is that it manufactures the double glazed windows and doors. The business model for the shiny glass company is to offer tailored solution to their clients. So this means that in terms of its pricing, I would say that different clients, their requirements would be different. And therefore the prices that we wish to charge them will be absolutely different there. But currently within the shiny glass company, we only have got an online sales diary system. And that would be too basic to be perfectly honest. So from my perspective, there are lots of possible areas that may come up, we'll see in a second. And the currency in this country is T dollars, and the company is preparing the vassal statements under the IFRS. And of course, later on, uh, when we dip into the IFRS section, I will take you through to each of the IFRS, for example, the IFRS 15, 16, and so on, and to apply to the shiny glass company in depth. Right, so you are the financial manager, which means you may be required to do quite a lot of things, uh, as usual, 
and reporting to these guys, absolutely fine though. Not very important from my experience because I've been teaching the MCS for many years, okay, since 2016 up to now. I've trained many MCS students to be the prize winners in the past. So this is why, according to my experience, each and every time if you see the uh, past pre scene always be lined up, no big deal. But uh, the most important thing to save you lots of time will be to directly go through each of the core activity before we dip into the exam technique and how we would prepare you to um, tackle this paper. Right, so um, I've got, for example, in my pre scene application, I, I've done the summary from the pre scene from my perspective, not very important. Because what we want to do is that when we touch on each of the core activity, we'll, we will be linking back to the pre scene case, okay, uh, closely, and that will be no problem for that whatsoever. Now let's kick off by looking at core activity area number A. Now, within the core activity number A, there are five particular sections required by SIMA. Right, so we are not particularly interested in uh, what will be the SWOT analysis and what will be the port of spy forces uh, for the shiny glass company. Because that will be a, uh, the outdated style of analysing the case. But more importantly, you will need to understand there will be lots of opportunities that uh, regarding different projects that the shiny glass company is going to invest. And especially for the digital data sources, we'll touch on that later on. And talking about the pricing strategies, business models, and even the weighted average cost of capital for this business. And of course, according to the SIMAS requirement, you will need to answer the following I can questions, because if you can answer them, you can tackle the upcoming sitting exam. So for example, whether or not you can choose the appropriate capital investment appraisal technique. So in other words, you will need to know the pros and cons okay, of each of the methods in turn later on. Whether or not you can identify and to use relevant digital data sources, pricing strategies, or which will be the most appropriate to the uh, shiny gas company, and uh, business models, which would be the most suitable one. And even talking about the ecosystem and uh, explain a bit of the whack, okay? Uh, because that would certainly impact on the share price later on. Now, number one then, or section one. This topic actually came from the SIMA P2 syllabus there. Now, what I want to do is that I want you to have a framework in mind, okay, uh, for the capital investment uh, when we are appraising it. Appraising it, which means that we are forecasting it, Okay, so to, to, to see uh, whether or not the proposed project would be profitable. Now, before we dip into the framework, the first thing I want you to do would be this. There might be different possibilities for the shiny glass company. So, for example, why not the shiny glass company on the exam day is going to develop innovative and energy efficient window product. Okay, so that would be a new product to the shiny glass company. You would say that the product development is a bit risky because the risk will be involving in the research and development or R&D because after you develop that product, customers may not like it. Marketing, for example, you may be facing lots of competition from the marketplace for similar product. You may be saying that these innovative and energy efficient window uh, products, you may later on to standardize the research and development and design work. So this is what I mean by you will try to set the standard price for that. Uh, maybe you may find similar products in the marketplace competing with you and to wipe out and to reduce your margin. So these are sort of issues they need to watch out for. But how about for geographical expansion? So for example, they expand into the new market. So for example, because we've got a clue from the pre scene that the construction sectors is growing. And of course, they may be one of our large clients 
that we wish to deal with. But um, if that's the case then, when dealing with the uh, uh, businesses, which means uh, switching from the B2C model to the B2B model, and certainly this will increase the receivable days that we need to manage our working capital more closely. But um, one thing I want, I want to touch on is that in this industry, by calculating the working capital cycle is negative. Because I'd like to take you back okay, to my pre-scene summary. Firstly, as we can see, that in our pre-scene summary, we've got the financial statements there, and I've calculated the cash cycle by taking the receivable states, plots inventory states, and to subtract payable states. If the cash cycle is positive, this means that uh, during that period, because we've invested our money into operating cycle, we haven't collected money from the customers yet. So during that positive days, we'll need to think about whether or not we've got enough money to finance that gap. Okay? However, in this industry, it seems to me it's negative. So which means that we have received money in advance, and this will be particularly good there. So why not to think about to expand your business later on by offering more credits to your customers, and that will be absolutely fine. That it will not hurt your liquidity position that too much. Okay. Now comparing with a competitor, we can see that their cash cycle would be negative as well. So it seems to me that would be a characteristic in this particular industry. We always get cash in advance, and that would be good there. So this leaves us to quite lots of opportunities later on uh, when we are thinking about this, because you can always bring that into your answer by saying that, OK, whether or not the proposed project will hurt your liquidity. Probably the answer is no. The reason is we can look at the cap cycles to be negative there. Now, uh, another one would be to improve the efficiency, okay, for example, using the technological upgrades, uh, okay, so to optimize the process, or even to improve your supply chain, and even to transform into a digital project, and thinking about the sustainability issues. Now, by whatever exam scenario, or we can call them as the unseen backgrounds, come into being on the exam day, that does not really matter. Because the, the examining team will require you to understand firstly the framework of the investment appraisal into your mindset and to give you later on the unseen material with the requirements and asking you, now let's deal with that. Next, have the framework in our mindset because that's taken from a similar P2. Now, when you are appraising a particular investment, investment means that you wish to spend your money out. You would need to understand the objective of that. So, which means that this in the uh, shiny glass company, so that we are producing or providing the premium product. So we care very much about our reputation. So, whether or not that particular proposed investment will meet with our current mission, okay, or current adjective, I would say. Okay, so current values, for example. Now, you will need to review the decision-making processes. So, for example, you will need to understand the risk and the stakeholders' interests. And particularly, that whether or not you would maximise the shareholders' wealth. And then, most importantly, you will need to have the following techniques uh, to forecast what will be the proposed return okay, from this project. For example, you can use the MPV, which means that if it is more than zero, that the shareholders' wealth can be maximised or can be increased to a certain extent by doing this project. IRR, standing for, this would be the maximum cost of capital that you can suffer. So for example, if you wish to proceed with this project, uh, you estimate that the IRR of the project may be like 15%, and that would be the IRR. So you can treat the IRR as the 
effective return per year. Now, if the IRR of this project is 15% to be estimated, and your current cost of obtaining finance from the bank, let's say it's 9%, so if the IRR is higher than the current costs, we wish to proceed with this project. The reason is, our wealth or the shareholders' wealth can be increased as a result because by undertaking that project, that the project MPV will be more than zero. We we'll also need to consider the payback period, which means that the number of years that we can repay our initial investment back. And of course, when computing and analyzing the payback period, we we'll always need to compare with our target. So, for example, if our target payback period for any given project would be 10 years, but for this project it's only for two years, of course, I would like to accept that project. And similar to the ROCE, or the return on capital employed, or sometimes you can see the term called ARR, accounting rate of return. So we need to compare with the target. I would say that if the target ROCE would be 30%, but this project only be, let's say, 10%. So if that's the case then, I will not accept that project. But um, the difference between the MPV and IRR and even the ROCE would be this. Now, these four will be based on cash flows, and this is based on accounting profit. You can say that to a certain extent, accounting profit can somehow to be manipulated by management okay, in terms of its financial statement. But we'll still use the ROCE to compute the return per period, okay, the short term. Well, the reason behind it would be this. Because, for example, when we are considering the MPV calculation, we consider something called the relevant cash flows. Now, relevant cash flows would not include the sunk cost. And that would be a very, very important concept here. Please think about it in this way. This is the timeline. This is the point that we make our decision. All right then. Now, before making that decision, I would need to spend money into the research and development, let's say $300. Now, after making that decision to proceed with our project, we'll need to incur $200 additional costs. And that cost is what I mean by relevant to that particular project and this should be included in the MPV calculation. However, how about the uh, first $300? Well, our answer would be that because that we spend $300 away in performing the research and development phase, we're not particularly sure that whether or not the project can be further proceeded with after we spend the money away. So that $300 will be irrelevant to the decision point because I have already spent that 300 before that decision point. I would say that $300 will be like the sunk cost. Now, uh, this should not be included in the MPV analysis, but we can't say that, well, we only consider $200 related to that project, but considering our overall profitability, yes, that $300 of the expenditure would be included in the ROCE calculation though. So this is why we've got that there. And of course, the MIRR, Modified Internal Rate of Return, at this level, I want you to remember this very similar to the IRR, so we need to compare the MIRR with our current costs of financing our project. If it is more than our current costs, proceeding with our project and we will get the positive MPV as a result. However, the improvement of the MIRR over IRR would be that uh, we change the, the assumption that the cash flows from the project will be reinvested at the company's cost of capital rather than at the IRR. So the MIRR will be more realistic than the IRR method. Though. Now, in the MCS exam, that these technique would just to be given you the final result. You don't really have to calculate that on your own, but you will have to understand what each of the method 
means, you will need to give a brief definition for that in your own words, and saying possibly the pros and cons of each of the method in turn. Now, another type of question that we'll see in a second, that the examining team may ask you that, okay, the shiny glass company is going to uh, proceed with a uh, project, for example, producing a new product, okay, so for example, the uh, uh, energy efficient windows and doors, okay, that would be a background information, and asking you, okay, so what would be the challenges, okay, if I were to appraise that project? Now, it's nothing to do with your pre-seen application at all, but it's all about knowledge. Now, uh, what you need to think about is that when appraising any sort of investment project in this exam, you will need to consider these two areas. Okay. Now, firstly, I mean, when we are talking about, for example, the challenges or the things that you need to bear that in mind, Firstly, related to the project itself. Secondly, related to the overall profitability. And this is from my experience. Now, related to the project itself, for example, Shiny Glass Company is going to produce the uh, energy efficient windows and doors. Right, the project lasting for number of years, five years or six years, we're not particularly sure. And you can add your thought related to that. So, for example, perhaps per the social trend, according to the pixel analysis or the pets analysis, we don't really have to quote any models in your answer, that uh, our project may be lasting for only three years instead of five, okay, because uh, from the year three onwards, due to the uh, dynamic uh, changes in the industry, social trend, uh, for example, the tastes may change okay, from our customers. Secondly, we'll need to consider the relevant cash flows. I would say that some costs will not be included. And of course, we can think about any sort of inflation. These are the economic factors okay, that can be factored in into analysis. And finally, the appropriate discount rate. And this could be reflected as the weighted average cost of capital. However, if you wish to proceed with a new project, of course, we'll need to change that discount rate to incorporate further risks into it. Of course, we'll need to consider the overall profitability. Because related to the project itself, we are mainly considering the cash flows inside, which means that we exclude the depreciation expenses and the sunk costs. But considering the overall profitability, so for example, you may need significant decoration costs to build your factory to produce these energy efficient windows and doors. So this means that the depreciation expenses will need to consider that okay, into it. At the same time, we will need to consider all these sunk costs, especially the, from our pre that we've got a lot of training costs, okay, uh, for our staff. And of course, these are sunk related uh, to the company as a whole, but not related to a single project. So make sure that you always balance these two when considering the challenges inside. Now, of course, number five there, we will need to consider the capital rationing scenarios. Because from our pre seed although I told you that the cash cycle to be negative, and that's good for our liquidity. The downside is that when you look at the financial statements of our shiny glass companies uh, annual report, if you look at in the SFP statement of financial position, you can see the bank balance has actually decreased from 15.4 down to 14.3. So this means that we may have limited fund because if you compare the bank asset with the PPE property plant equipment of course you can see that the bank balance will be quite smaller you haven't got enough cash to be perfectly honest so when you are not having enough fund but you wish to choose the project which will maximize the shareholders wealth and 
this situation we call as the capital rationing problem. So what we need to think about is that we will need to think about whether or not that project can be divisible or not divisible. It's highly likely that the project can be divisible because, for example, if shiny glass company is going to uh, implement a particular project, so for example, providing the energy saving windows and doors, that could be in different types. So for example, we can go through the type 1 of these windows, but stop the type 2 windows project. It's absolutely fine that, from my perspective. Because this industry is not like building a bridge. So I would say the project most likely to be divisible. So in answering the capture rationing uh, project or questions in the actual exam, you will need to tell the examining team that firstly, whether or not the project is divisible, and secondly, possibly you will need to use the PI method, which means the profitability index. to see which project offers the highest return and to utilize your funds and to maximize the shareholders wealth. Now of course you may need to consider the real options in the investment appraisal. So sometimes that because we are offering these sort of uh, glasses to a lot of clients, not only to the individual customers but even that we can offer these to for example to government or, or schools. So we may be expanding our business overseas. Now, if we bid for the project successfully, okay, on the exam day, but we are required to offer the product at a very competitive price, which may squeeze our profit, which means reducing our profit. So if that's the case then, whether or not we should proceed with our project? Well, the answer is, it really depends. From a financial term, you may not earn sufficient money. However, in the longer term, and this is what I mean by option, you have a choice to expand into the market to provide other products. So always bear that in mind that not only you need to focus on the current project, but you need to think about the future. Okay, and that's important. And even asset replacement, so during the project life, whether or not you should replace your uh, machine, uh, so you will need to compute what do I mean by equivalent annual costs. So for example, that you've got the asset one, asset two there, and the total costs for each will be 100 and 200. But asset one can only be used for two years, but asset two can be used for 10 years. So you will need to divide into the annuity factor at a particular discount rate for two and ten years so that you can calculate something called the IC or the equivalent annual costs and you will need to pick up the lower cost okay, uh, option for that. Yeah, you will need to consider the post-completion audit to see the whole process of appraising that project from start to end and whether or not you've chosen to correct techniques and so on, and that's important there. You can read those narratives. Uh, from my perspective, not particularly important then. But more importantly, we'll need to get used to how the MCS examining team tend to test this topic in the past. Now, of course, in our videos going through the pre scene application, so I will take you through to the past exam question. Later on, you will need to sit a mock exam, specifically tailoring to the shiny glass company. And I will need to mark your answer, providing you with constructive feedback in detail and telling you what areas that you can improve. Now, the first type of questions commonly seen for this topic in the past exam is that you are required to explain challenges in determining the MPV, particularly in quantifying future cash flows. Now, when you are answering this question and you say to me, well, Steve, right there, okay, I know the challenges, 
of determining that project, for example, for the project itself and the overall profitability. Yes, you can touch on that, absolutely fine that. So if I were you, there's a sub requirement for that, there's one question would be like 45 minutes. And this clearly to be part of the requirement as a sub requirement, let's say part A, that may be accounting for 60% or even 50% of the total time there. So possibly I would like to allocate 22 to 23 minutes to do this particular question. And from my experience, that when answering the MCS exam question, that usually I would highly recommend my students to write approximately 10 to 12 paragraphs. Okay, for each of the question in turn. Now I would say that when I plan the answer, it's very important in the MCS exam is to plan your answer. Now of course, I would like to write approximately, I don't know, five to six paragraphs for that. Now, uh, when I plan my answer, what I would do would be this. Suppose that this question is talking about the shiny glass and introducing the energy efficient windows and doors. Right there, okay. Now, I aim to write about six paragraphs for that. And what I would do is this. I will need to touch on, for example, the overall profitability by giving a point that saying that, okay, uh, when considering the project using other methods, we did not consider the overall profitability. So therefore, the sum costs depreciation, we may need to bring them in using the ROCE. I would say that this may be acting as my conclusion for this particular requirement. Absolutely fine there. So one paragraph for that. So don't forget that the examining team in this question ask you particularly. So this means that the majority of, of your answer should be focusing on the relevant cash flows, which means that relevant cash flows would be the key there. So I would say that relevant cash flows would usually consist of two things. Firstly, would be the sales revenue in cash. Secondly, is the cost in cash. So what I would do is that I would need to think about the sales revenue. Sales revenue will be equal to the number of customers and times by the selling price. All right, though. Now, what I would do is that the number of customers I can relate back to the fancy name called our market share. All right. Now, of course, we need to consider the market share of our new product. So what I would do is that I would like to compare with our competitors, okay? So I would need to take the competitor's information, but uh, more importantly, you will need to benchmark the best competitor in this particular market. And how about the price? I mean, you can bring the clue from the precinct. This from the precinct, as we can see there, the precinct material related to the sales. It seems to me that sales stuff can provide approximately 60% discount. Okay, so we've got a sales there. So salespeople authorized to give customers discounts of up to 60% in order to make a sale. So if that's the case then, right there, I would say that why not to consider the sales staff instead of giving 60% off discount, but uh, in order to keep our profitability, maybe we'll need to reduce that discount percentage. Okay. Now how about the cost then? Well, it could be variable, it could be fixed costs, but you will need to detail them in turn, all right? For example, the salary that we pay to our admin staff will be fixed costs, the variable costs, such as what materials that you're currently using. And of course, when you are forecasting these, you will need to consider, for example, variable costs you always bring with 
the supplier information in, so for example, the relationship with your supplier, whether or not you can claim the bulk discount when buying the raw materials in advance. By looking at the fixed costs, you may be expecting the fixed costs subject to inflation increasing that over the years, but uh, don't tell the examining team we try our best to cut the labour costs, because that could upset, for example, the labour union, which may be our important stakeholder. We need to consider uh, that in our case. So I would say that if I plan my answer in this way, for each of your point, please be concise and be accurate. You don't really have to quote from the pre-scene in most of your circumstances because by using these ways to analyse the pre-scene, you've integrated the pre-scene most important information into your mindset because your final goal is not to tell a story to the examining team. Your final goal is to tackle the exam questions that you are given on the exam day. So each of the exam questions will be taken from a syllabus area, so make sure that you can tackle that with the correct framework, but uh, with a bit of detail from the pre-scene, and that will be absolutely fine there. Now, the type 2 question that's uh, always seen in the MCS exam, because you will be sitting one of these six exams okay, in uh, the upcoming exam sitting. So don't simply guess what may come up. There's six exam variants would nearly cover all the topics in the MCS uh, syllabus. So make sure that you cover them in turn. Now, very commonly seen would be the capital rationing stuff. Okay, as I said before, in this industry, the projects always very likely to be divisible, and therefore using profitability index and you will need to tell the examining team how to calculate that. So, usually, we use the present value of the cash inflows of each of the project and divide this into the initial investment. It's like putting the initial investment in a denominator and to convert that into a present value, which means the profit to the business, by considering the time value of money effect. And we need to say if the PI, or the profitability index, for the project one is greater than project two, so we will need to allocate a fund to project one first before the project two. Another type of question uh, in the MCS exam related to the investment appraisal is that discuss whether the company should have planned for the introduction of additional capacity as a real option in the investment appraisal. All right, now. Uh, have you considered the real option? For example, the future part. For example, an option to invest additional fund and to expand our project, which means expanding our project so I can uh, make more product, for example, those glasses, windows, uh, and doors. I can sell to more customers in this market. So, of course, you need to tell the examining team that if the examining team wants you to understand real option, you will need to tell them what would be the concept of the real option. It's the future choice to buy or sell something, and that's it. And then you will need to tell the examining team the potential revenue streams. But you will need to detail that. So for example, when we are thinking about the second possibility to expand our business into another region, have you considered the real option in it? All right, now, how would you expand your answer? Now, if I were you, I would like to say like this. Right, firstly, I would need to consider the possible revenue streams. For example, if subsequently the shiny glass company decides to introduce upgraded product, so I can price the upgraded product at a higher price so I can expand my customer base later on. So that's the example of the core option, which means the option to buy, an option that you would like to invest your money further into this particular project. And of course, very importantly, you will need to consider there would be associated variable and fixed costs inside, and so on. You need to consider the 
competitor, which means the market volatility, and even to perform the risk management. Okay, so for example, that if you were to upgrade your product, whether or not you've bought the insurance in the very first place. Now, in your answer, that whether or not we have got one plus one formula in our MCS exam, but the answer is no. So each of the students' answer will be quite different. So when I mark the mock exam for the MCS exam, I've seen many students script that their answers will be absolutely different now. But most of them, yes, using my course, they've scored very high because I will always teach my students this. In the MCS exam, everyone is different. But as long as you can justify your answer, which means that you're not telling me about the theory, but you're telling me that, okay, I asked you about the real option. You know the basic step. Firstly, you will need to explain the complicated words, and then dip into that complicated words and apply that to the unseen first, which means the exam scenario or the exam day, before you go back to the pre -seen. If you follow that approach, you will score relatively high in this paper. Now, before we move on to the next part, which means the section two, I would like to stop the first recording now for the shiny glass complete go through. And look forward to seeing you then in the next of our section where we will be discussing from section two onwards Okay, in more detail. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye bye. A P C accounting for your future.